Okay, now that we understand the concept of an economic equilibrium, we need to know how to solve for that equilibrium algebraically in addition to graphically. So let's go through an example. Here, I've given you a demand curve that gives market demand for an item. I've also given you a supply curve that gives market supply for the item. The question that we want to answer right now is, what is the equilibrium price and quantity in this particular market? So the first thing that we can do is draw a graph and say, well, what does this guy actually look like? And then we can go from there to make sure that when we do solve algebraically, our answers are at least somewhat reasonable. So let's think about what this looks like on our supply and demand diagram. We have quantity demanded is equal to 42 minus 6 times the price that the consumer pays. So we can graph that over here by plugging in for the intercepts that we're looking for and then connecting the dots. So for example, when price is equal to zero, quantity demanded is equal to 42 minus zero, which is just 42. So we can represent that point here as when quantity is equal to 42, price is zero. Or maybe more intuitively, when price is zero, which is down here, quantity is equal to 42. So instead, we can talk about a point about here somewhere. Now we want to think about our other intercept. We can say, well, when quantity demanded equals zero, what's the price? So if zero is equal to 42 minus 6 times the consumer's price, or the price is equal to 7. So over here, we say when quantity is equal to zero, the price is 7, which gives us a point here. Now we can just connect the dots because we know that this particular equation is going to give us a straight line demand curve. Now let's do the same thing with the supply curve. If you remember from before, since supply curves start somewhere up here and slope upwards, we really only have one intercept to think about. So let's at least start by figuring out what that one looks like. Say so that intercept happens where quantity is equal to zero, so we can set quantity equal to zero and then solve for price. So if we go over here, we say that our supply curve is in terms of the price that the producer gets to keep for an item. So here, we say, well, if quantity supplied is equal to zero, this means that negative eight plus four P equals zero is equal to two. So on our graph, we can just say, well, that's this point about here. What this means intuitively is that the producer needs to get a price of at least two in order to be willing to produce anything. So when we start here, we don't know exactly how steeply the sky slopes upwards. We can say from this that we can figure out the slope. But for our purposes here, we might as well just draw something that will give us a general idea of what's going on. So I'll just draw a line like this. This is our supply curve here, and this is our demand curve down here. And to find the equilibrium price and quantity, we're just looking for the place at which the supply curve and the demand curve intersect. So graphically, we can represent that here, which gives us an equilibrium quantity transacted in this market, We'll call that Q star. It also gives us an equilibrium price in this market. We'll call that P star. So let's think about how to solve algebraically for price and quantity. So what do we really have going on here? If we look at how many different variables we have, it looks a little scary because technically we have four unknowns. We've got quantity demanded, quantity supplied, the price that the consumer pays, and the price that the producer gets to keep. So well, to solve something that has four unknowns, technically speaking, we need four equations, but we only see two here. So what do we do about that? Luckily, we have one equilibrium condition to add, and also a relationship between the price that the consumer pays and the price that the producer gets to keep. In this setup, it's actually pretty simple because we don't have any taxes or anything like that driving any sort of wedge between those two prices. 
So we can say in this unrestricted market here, well, the, everything that the consumer pays to get an item, the producer gets to keep as payment for that item. So we can add a third condition here, that the price that the consumer pays, the price that the producer gets to keep are the same. So we can just say, well, we'll just call this P. We'll just make our lives easier. We can also say that in equilibrium, quantity demanded and quantity supplied have to be the same, because these two curves are intersecting here. So then we can say here, we get our fourth condition. The quantity demanded has to be equal to quantity supplied. So now we have everything that we need to be able to solve. So I'll just start with this guy here, because this is really the fundamental equilibrium condition. And what we'll do is we'll just plug in the demand and the supply curves so that we can actually solve. So let's plug in on this left-hand side for quantity demanded. So this is just 42 minus 6p, since we decided we're just referring to all the prices as this one p here. On the other side, we want to plug in what we have for our supply. So here, we're just going to say on the right-hand side, we just substitute in quantity supplied, we substitute in the equation for it. So you get negative 8 plus 4p. And now it's just a matter of solving for p with some simple algebra. So what I want to do is I want to get all the p's on one side, and I want to get all the numbers on the other side. So we can go through here and say, well, let's add 6p to both sides. That would give us 42 is equal to negative 8 plus 4p plus 6p, which is going to be plus 10p. Well, now let's add 8 to both sides. So now we could say 42 plus 8, which is 50, is equal to 10p, or p is equal to 5. When we have an equilibrium price or an equilibrium quantity, we usually note that in a special way. You'll notice on the graph I noted the equilibrium prices and quantities as P star and Q star. So this price here is our P star. So that answers half of our question. Because So what is the equilibrium price? Now we know that. The second half of the question is what is the equilibrium quantity? So what we want to do to get that is to take this price and substitute it back into one of these equations. And you'll notice that it doesn't matter which equation we substitute back into, because we said here by definition that quantity demanded and quantity supplied have to be the same at this price. So you just take whichever one seems easier. Let's say here, then, that our Q star which is how we're going to denote our equilibrium quantity, our Q star is equal to 42 minus 6 times the equilibrium price. Well, we know that the equilibrium price is 5, so we can just plug that in. And we get that Q star is equal to 42 minus 6 times 5, which is 42 minus 30, which is 12. So this answers the second half of the question. The equilibrium quantity transacted in this market is 12 units. And we can say Q star is equal to 12. What this means on our graph is if we were to label these, that this point here is the point 12, and this point here is the point 5. And we can look at this and say, well, granted, our graph is not drawn to scale, but this makes a lot of sense, because we were looking for a price that we knew had to be between 2 and 7, which 5 is, and we were looking for a quantity that's less than 42, which 12 is. So going back and looking at what's reasonable in terms of your equilibrium price and quantity can be helpful in case you make a math error and get something that just doesn't make sense in terms of your graph, you'll be able to catch it sooner rather than later.